now. And Alicia, let me make you co-host. Okay. Perfect. Okay, should I start? You can if you want to. If I have a moment today, we're, we're ending at seven. Yeah, we're ending a little early today, so. Let's get the preliminaries over with. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my name is Alicia Walker, and I am calling this meeting to order as co-chair. Governor Baker's extension of the March 12 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law allows us to hold this virtual meeting of the working group. Given that we have a quorum present, I am calling the July 29th, 2021 meeting of the Community Safety Working Group to order at 5.34 p.m. I will call upon each member of the working group by name. At that time, they should unmute their mic and say present. This will indicate that they can hear me and we can hear them. Please remember to mute your mic after saying present. Deborah Ferreira. Present. Russ Vernon Jones. Present. Darius Cage. Present. Brianna Owen. Present. Pat Ananabaku. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I want to take a couple minutes to review the agenda. We will first hear any public comment that members of the public want to provide to the working group. We will not respond to your comments, but we'll listen to your comments carefully. We will then hear comments from members who have something to report. Then we can get right into the agenda as follows. Um, a discussion of the questions submitted by Russ Vernon Jones, <clears throat> the resident oversight board in regards to membership, stipend and consultants, um, the standing committee. Can you see the, the agenda? Sorry. No, yeah, perfect. Thank you, Ms. Moisson. <clears throat> um, the subgroup check-in and CRESS implementation follow-up. Our first order of business is the public comment section of the agenda. If any members of the public would like to make a statement, please raise your hand. I will recognize you and ask Ms. Moiston to turn on your microphone. I ask that comments be limited to no more than three minutes. The working group will not be responding to your comments, but we will be listening carefully. <clears throat> I don't think we have any one. Is it okay if I continue? Okay. This is time for members to update us on any work they are doing or events that are coming up. Does anyone have any items they'd like to share? Ms. Pat? Hi, everyone. I hope we will have enough time tonight to decide on the uh, name for the standing committee um for the DEI I would like to submit the document to the town manager ASAP I thank you for uh members who responded back thank you very much thank you Ms. Pat Ms. Ferreira um just to say that uh myself and Ms. Pat we went to the uh paraprofessional um kind of speak out and organize organizers that were out at the town common on saturday um i i got there a little bit late so i'm not sure what happened in the beginning but at least uh you know there were a lot of people out there um helping out I, for me i wish there had been more people because this is such an important uh topic um especially in terms of our schools and education and you know, our children within um, the public school system, um, especially in terms of having, making sure that all children are being um, aid, you know, given the aid that they need in the classroom and help. Um, so it's a very important issue, but I was um, glad to see, you know, a lot of people there. And of course, there were a lot of people also in support of a lot of the work that we're doing, um, of our work that we're doing with the CSWG. So, um, you know, it was good, but hopefully next time there'll be more people. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Ms. Pat? So just to add to what Ms. Deborah just um, stated, I just want to let everybody know that actually white folks came to, to me 
to thank us, CSWG, for the work we're doing. We appreciate it. People are tuning in, and you know, I, I wanted to share that with everyone. And definitely to also see the uh, uh, the firefighters come out to support um, our our fire educators um, was really good. It was really diverse uh, residents and employees of MS Town that came out. So I hope um, that the school committee, you know, paid attention and do the right thing for our frontline, you know, workers who do make it possible for our, our students that need extra support to succeed in our school system. So it was a great gathering. I came when they were finishing up uh, speeches. So, but it was a good turnout. It was good. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Okay. Um, and so I would like to move on um, to the next part of our agenda, which is discussion on questions submitted by Russ Vernon Jones. Um, I wanted to gauge where the group is at and see if we're all open and open in bringing back this conversation around community police um, policing. Ms. Pat. I, I recommend that we table this um, questions for next week because we have short time today. I mean, we could, you know, try to discuss it. My leaning, I can't speak for everyone is for us to recommend that the town needs to heal, the resident needs to heal. Like the visioning uh, process that Dr. Barbara Love had recommended. Like, I don't even know how we can even begin to discuss community policing without really dealing with healing process. You know, it's hard for me, it's challenging. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Ms. Ferreira? Yeah, I, I just want to second what Ms. Pat said in terms of like, I think if we could table this till next week, because, you know, the other the the, the other um, issues on our agenda, I think, is going to take up a, a big chunk of time. And then, you know, we need to wrap it up by seven. So anyway, that's my thing. That's why I don't even want to get into the kind of um, nitty gritty of it. I would just say, like, let's let's put it on to next week. Okay, um, Mr. Vernon Jones. Yeah, I agree we should not try to deal with this this week. Okay, great. Um, and so unless there is anybody who is in disagreement, I am going to move um, on to the next portion of our agenda, which is uh, the resident oversight board in regards to membership stipends and consultants. Ms. Pat. So again, I want to thank uh, Mr. Ross Vernon Jones for really putting this together for us. Like I've read it three times. And uh, in terms of membership, I, I know we've discussed it in the past. I am wondering if the language could read um, up to seven members, like between five and seven members. It doesn't have to be like specific number. Uh, language, some, something like that. Even though, you know, I was leaning towards seven members, but, you know, to, to stay up to seven members, minimum of five members. That's something I, you know, I want to throw out. The second thing is the stipend. And, and I'll shut up after that. Is that the town manager has um, budgeted 80K for everything that has to do with equity for this current fiscal year. And I would like to propose that a stipend be 3,000 for each uh, oversight board member. Um, just because of the budget, you know, so that that would be enough in you know, the money to do other stuff that is related to equity. Plus, we don't want to you know, recommend something that the town council will reject. I'm already hearing that the 10 case no go. And um, this is just my, I'm, I'm talking for myself and I'll shut up. 
Thank you, Ms. Pat. Ms. Ferreira. Yeah, I also want to thank uh, Mr. Rusburn and Jones for putting this together. I mean, it's a tremendous amount of work. Thank you so much for um, getting us going with this and, and um, you know, really making our lives easier in terms of, of putting together this body of work. Um, I have a couple of things that I wanted to kind of highlight um, the, in the document itself that, you know, that kind of came up for me. I guess the uh, the thing is, and it's not in any of those three kind of um, sections on the agenda, but I still have a, a question around, I guess, the investigations portion. Everything that has to do with investigations portion is um, kind of, you know, I think we still need to clear that up a little bit more. Um, because one, it still says, so I, I guess I want to get from, from you, Mr. Vernon Jones, like, it still says that the police can do their own internal investigations. And then obviously if the board disagrees with that, then um, they can decide to do their own investigation. Um, so for me, I think that needs to be cleared up because one, you know, there hasn't been trust with the internal investigation. So I don't know why is it that we're not just saying that, it, you know, why aren't we removing that portion out of it? I guess I need to know more to, to see why we're still keeping the internal investigations portion in there. Is it a money thing? Is it whatever? And if it is, it, then that shouldn't be a barrier, you know, because we need to do what's best for the community, you know? And I don't want to use an, uh, um, a mechanism that hasn't worked in the past and still utilize it in this way, you know? So for me, the better thing would be to have, uh, you know, for the board to have their own cadre of investigation investigators um, to utilize in this situation. I don't think it's a good idea for the board members to be doing investigations. Cause remember I've, I've been an investigator for years <laughs> that, that, you know, I, I supervised investigators for discrimination claims and investigations are very complicated, very difficult. And you have to be impartial. You have to know what you're doing. You have to know how you're asking questions to the witnesses, everything, you know, and then obviously putting together a report and all of that, that is very intricate work. And I wouldn't recommend board members be doing investigations because I saw that too in terms of in, in this. Um, so, so that's why for me, it's like, it, it should be, you know, the cadre of, of, of investigators that they have, there should be some money for that. They put together the, um, and the investigative, they do the investigation, they put together investigative report. I don't know if they necessarily need to make the recommendations. You know, a lot of times they just put together an investigative report and then the board could, you know, read that and then come up with their own decisions at that point in terms of what to do or, or whatever. Um, but that would be something that we could decide. But um, but yeah, so I have some issues with, with that portion and I want to hear, you know, what your thinking is about that because I, I, have, I, have, I have concerns. Um, and then the other one in terms of what uh, Ms. Pat said, I agree with, I think it should be seven members, um, five BIPOC and at least two are Black African-American or African descent members. Um, I think that's the way I would I would like to, to have it written. Just because seven members seems like it's a good number. You know, five might be a little bit too, too little in terms of like people are absent if they can make it, because this is gonna be something that's gonna be exhausting, taxing. Some people might need some breaks here and there. So seven members would give you, you know, a good solid amount of people to make um, certain decisions. Um, yeah, so I'll stop there. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Ms. Pat? So I also uh, wanted to raise, um, are we planning to um, do standing committee charge for, for oversight board? I know this is a recommendation. Is this what we're presenting? Like we have the DEI um, standing committee are we going to have similar thing? Or is, or, or is this what we're, uh, we're giving to the town manager? Um, Ms. Pat, I just need a little bit of clarification. Do okay. You... So um, all the work that Mr. Rosman and Joss has done 
I know, um, are we going to have another document, just one page, you know, for oversight board, what their charge is or not? Does that make sense? You mean like written out in the format of what we like, did? Like the one we did with DEI. Mm. Well, I mean, I thought I just thought that what Mr. Mr. Vernon Jones was putting together was kind of like, okay, why we need an oversight board, what's going to be their function, why why they need it, so on and so forth. I thought that this is what we needed to do. Do we need to create a charge for them too? I, I guess I'm a little bit confused. I, I don't know if we need that. Ms. Moiston. So I believe that the charge would come from out of from the town from out of the information that is here, of course, with your review and approval, I would assume, but that's typically how the charges are created. And then there's a template that all standard charges look like from the town side. So then I have a question. So if the town is going to do the charge, so why did the town manager ask us to come up with the DEI uh, standing committee charge? I think that one was a little different because okay. because that too will come and he and it will be put into the format of what our charges look like. But the okay. information he needed he needed the guidance and the information from the CSWG. Got you. Okay. You just answered my question. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Moiston. Ms. Ferreira. I guess now I'm confused and maybe I, I missed it while I was um, out, um, you know, during vacation when I missed the two meetings. So this charge over here is for the DEI charge. I thought it was for the standing committee uh, in terms of those, the group that's going to replace us. Why are we calling it the DEI charge, I guess? No, well, it's not only one. It, yeah, it's, uh, it's the, the standing committee is the committee that will replace us. Mm -hmm that will support DEI department as well yeah. as press department. Okay, just, so you're just I'm calling crazy, it that. Like calling it a DEI committee. Okay, yeah. gotcha, gotcha, all right. So great. the town manager wants us to come up with charge for this yeah. standing committee. No, no, so, I get that now. Yeah, so it was I, the name. So that like, was the yeah, so like five minutes ago, I posed the question, do we need to come up with charge for the oversight board from the material that Mr. Ross has already provided us. That was my question. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, no. Ms. Moistin clarified that the town will extract, you know, uh, the charge for the oversight board based on this material, if I understood what you said, Ms. Yeah. Ms. Moistin. Yeah. Well, let me let me just say before you answer, Ms. Moisey. No, I understand. It was just what was throwing me off was just the the, the fact that you had already been calling it the DI, even though I know we're gonna name it. And I get it in terms of us doing the charge for that because that's the group that's going to replace us. So we're the ones that kind of know most intimately what that group should be working on. So it makes sense for us to create the charge. Whereas for me, in terms of the oversight board, it's more so, uh, you know, why we need an oversight board, because that was the thing, right? We're making recommendations in terms of our second charge, our second part of our charge with, as a CSWG. And that was part of it in terms of what it, is it that's needed for police reform and so on and so forth. And the oversight board is, is this this document is trying to answer that question. Um, so I definitely understand the difference. But I still want to hear from Mr. Vernon Jones about the investigators portion because I have a lot of concerns about that. So hopefully that didn't get forgotten. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Ms. Pat. So Ms. Weinstein or the coaches, are you guys going to get the clarification from the town manager? Because I don't want things repeat itself like we did with the part A when the co-chairs presented at the town council and they kept saying, what is the job description for this respondents? What is this? What is that? What is that? So I don't want at the end of our chat, of our work, then the town goes, well, you gave us recommendation for oversight and why we need it. What is their charge? I mean, if the town, is going to do it, that's fine. If not, I don't think it's very hard. We can just pull stuff together for the charge, yeah. I just don't want to say, oh, yeah, okay. 
Thank you, Ms. Pat. Ms. Moyston. I, I just think that the information for the charge will come out of this document is my thought on it too, where it's a scope of responsibilities and um, the membership, all of that is the defines the charge. And so in, yeah. And that's what would be used. Is, did my understanding you correctly? Is that what you're asking? I mean, I can't predict what's going to happen with the council, so I don't. If it's helpful, Ms. Pat, Brianna and I are um, in conversation with Mr. Mr. Balkelman in terms of rescheduling the conversation um, that we were wanting to have with him. And I think we have, um, we're going to be able to meet with him sometime next week and we can add that to the list of things we ask just to get clarification, if that's helpful. I mean, this document is very comprehensive and I appreciate it, you know, um, with the template that the town has, I mean, I don't know if, if that's what is on their website, but I looked at different um, committees, you know, how the format, how they're set up. This document is very comprehensive. I mean, uh, from the chat, we're not going to put in like complaint procedure, for example, in the chat, but it's okay. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Mr. Vernon Jones. Um, yeah, let me, a number of things. My sense is that, you know, Brianna and Alicia and I had one meeting with the chief of police with an earlier draft of this. Um, I think if we can come to relative agreement on, on this document, that this could be the basis of Brianna and Alicia and me going back to the chief and see if we can't get an agreement with the chief about how all this is going to work and go forward. And if we have the chief on board, then it seems to me we ought to be able to get the town manager on board. At that point, I think we would need to have a conversation with the town manager about how a charge document or a the, the actual thing that will be voted by the town council will be developed. Um, because I would like that to happen while this is still, well, we still have some control over it. Uh, and I, I mean, I think the, the text is basically here and can be extracted, but um, I'm hoping that maybe the town manager and we can work together to make sure we're in agreement about just how that extraction occurs. Um, but I'd like us to, to work with the chief first and see, see what, how much agreement we can get. Um, well, I, I like the idea of up to seven members, uh, and I would support Ms. Betts notion of a $3,000 stipend, but I would add to that, uh, that the members should be compensated for time spent in required trainings, because I think there'll be quite a bit of that at the beginning. Um, and you know, maybe there should be an opportunity to be reimbursed for transportation expenses as well. I don't, I don't, we could decide whether we want that in addition to the stipend or not. With regard to the um, investigations, um, I, I don't think we can forbid the police department to do their own internal investigations. I mean, I think they will, they'll, they'll do whatever they do. Um, and my thought was, what I was imagining is a situation in which the board had several things coming to it. Uh, and one of them had clear racial issues involved. And another one, you know, maybe two white, college students were in a fight and one of them complained that the officer took sides to, between them in breaking up the fight. Um, if I were on the board, I would think, you know, let the police department investigate that one, see what they think, bring us a report, and we can decide, you know, whether we think it's adequate or whether we think a further investigation or something needs to go on. And the board could put its energy and focus on the one that has uh, implications for the BIPOC community and the potential of, you know, biased policing and, uh, and all of that. Um, so I just didn't want to require the board to have to get 
involved in everything if there were some that didn't seem particularly uh, relevant, uh, but I'd always want them to have oversight of it. Um, how much the board does and how much investigators do, I think we could, could talk about what, what language is there, but I certainly support having, and I, I think the board should hear from the complainant first and should hear from the officer, but I, if the, beyond that, I think uh, the more we can have professional investigators investigate, the better. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Ms. Pat? So, um, actually, I thank Ms. Um, Deborah for raising the investigation thing. Mm -hmm. Practically, realistically, there's nothing the oversight board can do to stop internal investigation. However, I don't think we should put it in here that they, you know, they will still do what they want to do, like Mr. Ross stated. Secondly, I feel uncomfortable for the board, the oversight board to be conducting investigation as an employer is time consuming. I mean, I know that's, you know, part of what this, that's why I keep asking what is the charge? You know, what are we going to put out for the charge of the oversight board? I think we should have external investigators hired as consultant to investigate complaints and then present it to the board. Because if we are going to be having oversight board members to be investigating complaints, it's something that needs to be done well, it's time consuming and it might follow lawsuits and everything. So I would rather have the town budget money for external investigators to investigate some complicated issues. But if it's something that is like, won't take much time, maybe the board can look into it. Is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But internal investigation should not even be in our document at all. You know, the police will do what they, the APD will do what they, what, what they do. I know, the internal investigation has not been very efficient or effective or there's none, there's none. It's not transparent anyway, so. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Ms. Ferreira. Yeah, and I mean, and that's my point, you know, I mean, I, I guess what we have to do is that we have to figure that out, right? Either we're going to mention it or we're not going to mention it. And if we're going to mention it, then Mr. Mr. Vernon Jones, we have to be very careful about how we mention it. It can't be just kind of like, well, they're going to do whatever they're going to do. And so if they have certain things that are not BIPOC related, then let them do it or whatever. My thing would be if they are going to do it, then they'd have to notify the board. OK, these are the things that we're investigating. Then let the board have that decision whether they want to get involved or not it can't be up to them you see what i'm saying so that means even if they're going to do it and we'd have to put that in this document you know what i'm saying because if we don't put that in this document it's not going to happen so that's why I'm, I'm being a stickler for this in terms of these investigations because a lot of it is going to ride on that and 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 Whoever said this was absolutely right. The, whatever investigations and whatever comes out of it, right? If you're if you're going to make recommendations to discipline a, a police officer first and foremost, and then and, and you know and maybe possibly terminate them from their job, or there could even be criminal uh, implications at the other end. That investigation needs to be solid, solid to be able to overcome all types of challenges. That's why I'm saying, I'm just like, I keep on telling you all, this is very important. So in terms of the internal investigations, again, what I say is, is just make sure that if, if you're gonna allow the police to do their internal investigations and the board's gonna pick and choose what they're gonna get involved in, that's fine, but we better say that, you know what I'm saying? So that it's clear and not just kind of like, well, they're doing it. And so when does the board get involved? You know, when, how does the board know that you know, this is something that was a, a fight that happened, whatever, between two drunk people, two white, you know, drunk people that had nothing to do with, with, with people of color. Um, and so, hey, yeah, take it away. You know what I'm saying? And how, how, do, how, how does the board know when to, to, to get involved? I mean, we have to be very clear. I have those questions. If I have those questions by reading this document, others are gonna have those same questions and they're gonna double 
those questions. You see what I'm saying? So that's the thing. We, we need to clear that up. Either we're, we're going to deal with it, have internal investigations, or, you know, or not. And if we're not, then we don't mention it. If we are, then we need to clarify that when the board gets involved. And then in terms of the investigations themselves, that needs to be solid, that needs to be by professionals, and that needs to make sure that it stands whatever challenges and those challenges will come, all right? When I did my investigations, it was external agencies, state agencies, federal agencies, all sorts of agencies that had to look at my investigation and understand it, you know, from top to bottom. If they didn't understand it, it was going to be thrown out, <laughs> you know? So, I mean, this is, this is serious business. So, but I'll stop there. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Uh, Ms. Moisten. So I, I do agree with Ms. Deborah that there should be, or Ms. Ferreira, that there should be clarity around this. I you know, from past experience, well, not past experience, but I guess it would be good to know while Rob has a specific concentration on BIPOC community members, does that mean it doesn't oversee anything else that's not race related? And then, because, I, you know, in all honesty, like there could just be two non-BIPOC members who whatever reason get in a fight and then there's some kind of issue surrounding the police and that investigation doesn't go as well. So I don't know that like that way to exclude something due to race because then it, that's kind of what we're trying to avoid doing, right? Like it's all inclusive. But the other thing is too is, you know, coming from dealing with the complaints with the Human Rights Commission, I'll be the first to say that it seems very odd to have a town board or staff member doing complaints and having someone in, who's more neutral would perhaps be better to do the investigation. Whatever the decision comes out of, you know, that could come out of Rob based off of the investigation, but it seems like there's always a, a trust issue somewhere in there when you have a complaint against the town and then you have a town body standing investigating that complaint right like i think that's a barrier for the human rights commission complaints right is that people feel like it's just you know town people doing the investigation and therefore it it's not seen through a neutral lens thank you miss moiston mr vernon jones yeah, thanks for all this. This is helpful. Um, I did not mean to imply that the Resident Oversight Board wasn't going to deal with issues about white people. I just wanted to give the board some power to decide its priorities. But uh, what I'm hearing you say, if I'm, I don't know, but not everybody's spoken, of course, but um, what I'm hearing is we should remove the option for the board to refer something to an internal investigation and to simply take that out. And we should put in language requiring that the board be notified of all internal investigations uh, and have the opportunity to choose uh, to take them up and do their own investigation, to take them up and review them, um, but that the APD would be required to notify the board of of such of all those investigations. I mean, I, I mean, I don't know whether it's a lot or a few, but. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Uh, Ms. Moiston. So I'm, I, so the complaint process starts with the board though, right? That's where an individual files, right? I just wanna make sure I understand the process, right? So if they file, I don't even understand how it gets to the point where the PD is doing their own investigation. My understanding is that, uh, well, what I, what I wrote is that whoever receives the complaint, because somebody might complain to the town manager, they might complain to the chief, doesn't matter where they complain, unless they put it in writing that they don't want the board involved, it must be given to the board. Uh, so, I mean, I just think that any complaint that came to the town manager's office, I would refer them back to the board, I think would be the the structure of that. Yeah. Right? So before it even falls in the PD's hands for them to do a private investigation. Well, I'm just a little bit confused. I'm sorry. So I'm trying to like, I'm trying to like 
see the process in it in in its entirety that's all and i'm just i'm i'm i i'm feeling like there's a, a couple of gaps that, that might need to be filled but i again i'm not complaining about the work it's fabulous thank you miss moiston miss pat and then miss ferrera so i was going to say that the current practice is you're supposed to fill out complaint online on ms website or you can um contact the chief directly to file a complaint so what i want to, what i i would like to suggest is for the town to uh, direct complaints that people file to the board mm -hmm. of complaints nothing to be filtered and then the board takers from there sort it out and you know deal with it if they need external investigator for a more complicated one if it's something they think they can handle back we shouldn't pick and choose whether this is by you know it affects by food person or homeless person and so on and so forth i think all complaints filed even i have problem with people filing electronically because that you know we do have technological technology gap you know that people who may not be able to access that i hope there will be other means for people to file complaint including calling to file complaint so it's something we need to figure out too so that there will be a variety of ways where people can write complaint and mail not to the police station but um somewhere yeah so if this can be directed to the oversight board yeah this is what i'm talking yeah this is what i'm talking about thank you miss moisture Thank you, Ms. Pat. Um, Ms. Ferreira? Yeah, and I, I agree with that too. I mean, you know, this is a new day and age and you have to use the technology and be able to allow people to, to report, right? You're making, you know, you're filing a report there um, and also in person and, you know, however else, you know, it's all different mediums in terms of them being able to, to make a report or file a complaint. Um, you know, but I think that again, that that we need to be clear in terms of like what Ms. Moyston's saying, and 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 again, Mr. Vernon Jones, nothing about your work because it's awesome. It's just to kind of we got to just clear up some of these things, yeah. just so we make sure that it flows uh, really nicely, so that people um, you know don't have questions when we present this with the document because we know there's going to be a gazillion questions anyway. Mm -hmm even when it's streamlined, never mind, you know? So it's kind of like, you know, it goes to the board. So so that is a good question. If everything, and you had put it in this document that unless someone doesn't want it to go to the board, right? It, it You know, everything should go directly to the board so that the board can review it. And what I mean by the only thing that I can think about if someone doesn't want to go to the board is maybe that, you know, maybe the person knows the board member, you know, a certain board member has a conflict with them or doesn't like them or doesn't whatever feel comfortable. We have to we have to take that into consideration that can happen. Right. So it, we can't force everyone to, to to go to the board. They might feel comfortable going elsewhere and we have to allow for that. But I'm saying, but if someone doesn't state that on their complaint, then it's to go you know, to the board. So if it's going to the board, then how is it getting then delineated, right? To, you know, how how is it then that the police chief is going to be doing an internal investigation on it? You know, that would be the, the only way that that would happen would be if the board said, okay, here, police chief, here's a complaint, go do the internal investigation. So that's why for me, I'm kind of like, I, I don't think we, we shouldn't be doing that. It's kind of like, it comes to the board, the board has its investigators, and then um, it gets, you know, it gets looked into or whatever, you know, um, and, and then a decision gets made in regards to it. Um, and so that would kind of take out that, that option of, the police needing to do these internal investigations are going off on their own. Now they would have that, they would have that potential or that opportunity, let's say again, like I said, if someone says, I don't want it to go to the board because I have some type of conflict or I don't like the, you know, this, this board or I don't, whatever, then it would go to the police chief or whatever the, their process is over there. And then they would do their, their investigation and, and, and go from there. But everything else, 
unless someone says, I don't want it to go to the board, it should go to the board and then they should handle it within, within the process that we state here. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Uh, Ms. Moyston. Yep, and just the logistics of like this form can be routed to the staff liaison. Uh, I mean, it's like for the Human Rights Commission complaints, that form gets automatically routed to me and then I move forward with that. In, and so I'm assuming that this group will work in the same way, either their staff liaison and then the staff liaison will send it to the board itself. So the logistics piece of them getting it is, is easy. But what I will say from receiving Human Rights Commission complaints is A, the majority of them um, has been lately a lack of internet access. So I'm completing the form for the individual over the phone and then they have to come in to sign it right? Or they're here and I'm typing in the information and then they sign it. So I just, I'm trying to, you know, I don't know if the on, so I don't necessarily think for a complaint like this that the online form is the best way to go, but, you know, um, more of talking to a person. So if it can be set up somehow so that people go to the board, and I don't know if you want to do that during a meeting. So I guess that's something that needs to be thought out too, right? because you don't want to run into the same problems that the HRC runs into where they're doing it dur during a public meeting. Thank you, Ms. Moyston. Um, Mr. Vernon Jones. Yeah, I think it's really important that complaints confidentiality. Uh, and that's why I wrote in the possibility of complainants appearing before the board over Zoom um, because no one, until the board was in executive session, no one would need, that person wouldn't need to be anywhere near the meeting. Um, I also envision that the board might call meetings and announce in the agenda that the only thing on the agenda is a vote to go into executive session. Um, and so that, uh, and I, ideally, I would love to see the board meet uh, someplace where there's a front and a back entrance and the, the press is at one door and the, the person who's coming to appear before the board can can come early and sit and read a book in a back room and then enter so that it's completely confidential that they even appeared before the board. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. So, you know, sorry. Yes, go ahead, Ms. Pat. So, some of the issues that is coming up, that's why I was asking the question, are we going to have like a separate document for the charge for um, the oversight board? So for example, like the issue of, you know, um, staff uh, liaison, who would, you know, who would, who, would, who would be that person? Because I don't want it to, to be a police officer, to be the staff liaison. So do we want to think about the press director or DEI director? Uh, something for us to think about, for example. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Okay. And yes, Ms. Moyston. I'm so sorry, just to, to quickly. So, and I just, this goes back to, I think, what Ms. Pat was saying earlier. So, like, the Human Rights Commission has a charge, but then it has a mission statement. And so this document that we have currently, once it's in its final form, can be that actual mission statement and then have a separate charge. At some point, we kind of talked about the clarity of the, of the document. So, I, I mean, I kind of look at it in that perspective where there's the charge, and then we can also use this document as the mission statement. Thank you, Ms. Moyston. Mr. Vernon Jones. Well, what about this idea of the staff liaison? Is it appropriate to say it's the DEI director or, or their mm -hmm. designee? Yeah, I think that that's pretty much where that's gonna yeah, that's fall that doing. way. Yeah. All right, well, let's, let's write that right in now. Uh, okay, you know, let's do that. I mean, what what I've heard tonight, it will, I'll, I'll go back and redraft this based on, um, you know, what I've, what I've heard. I think you've, you've got, had a lot of good ideas here. Uh, do we need to talk more about the, 
uh, the size of the stipend or the the size of the board? Um, yes. So I was going to suggest that we circle back to the um, the membership and see if we can try to come to an agreement on how we would like to either what number we would like to pick or how we would like to word it for the membership of the resident oversight board. I had. Yes, Ms. Pat. So I propose up to seven members, minimum of five members. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Um, Mr. Vernon Jones. Yeah, I, I support Ms. Pat's recommendation there. Ms. Ferreira? Yeah, I'm good with that. Um, but I still think uh, that we should kind of say how many, you know, a BIPOC and all of that, like we were, we were thinking. Was I gonna so, say? Yeah. No, go ahead. So we'll just come up with a percentage. So if, if only if, if, um, if it's like five member, so at least 60% will be BIPOC or 80. What do people think? So we come up with number 60, 80% of the board. Ms. Moisten. I'm just a little curious about how that plays out. If you have up to seven and you have five people and 60% and then- So, three, so, so right, so three and two. So do we just, do they just, stop and say we're not going to do the seven then it should just be a board of five does that make do you understand what i'm saying like do. how do you how do you keep control if it's five to seven with that ratio i'm trying to reach a compromise my first preference to be honest with you is seven but you know given the nature of the board I don't know if anybody will want to even serve on the board, especially BIPOC folks. So rather, not, rather than not have enough people like seven, like five BIPOC and two white, you know, I will settle for five BIPOC, uh, five board members. To me, it would be like four, BIPOC, but I will agree to three BIPOC. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Ms. Moisten. And also, you know, like the Human Rights Commission at one point was a seven member board, but we were consistently having problems keeping a quorum. So we had that number changed to nine. Oh. Right. So you can, so it can, the board itself can say, you know, we need to extend out from five to seven. And that way they know exactly what that ratio needs to be, if that makes sense. So if we write in the charge five at any time that the board feels like they need to ex you know, have additional members added, they can do that. Thank you, Ms. Moiston. So I'm also, I'm, I'm in agreement with Ms. Pat and I, I like the language of up to seven, but with the concerns that Ms. Moisten brought up, I don't know in what way we would be able to figure that out unless we said something like only odd numbers, but then that would be five or seven and they just can't do a six member board. Um, but my concern also is that we would have issues finding membership and retaining membership when we're also creating a standing committee and that there will also be the creation of a reparations board or committee and that we'll all be competing for members, um, for people who are interested in participating in something like this. And so I do have concerns about that in terms of being able to find and maintain a seven member board with the majority BIPOC, but ideally, seven would be better. I just don't know if that's going to be possible. And so I don't know how we can sort of change the language to indicate that. Um, Ms. Pat? And also the way the town council have treated CSWG, people will have to like think very hard to join 
other boards in in the in the town. So membership is a concern, but just to let people already know this, the reparation group is ad hoc committee. It's a temporary thing um, that the town manager is trying to put together, and and then they will disband. I think it's very temporary, like CSWG. But in in any case, it still will be difficult to recruit people to oversight board or any of the board in town because of the way we've been treated. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Ms. Owen? Um, also, I think in an ideal world, I would want seven people. But one thing that I keep hearing come up is like the stipend, the stipend, the stipend. So I feel like if we have five people, it'll give us a better chance to pay um, members at least 3000 as Ms. Pat and others agreed with. Thank you, Ms. Owen. Um, so at this point, I'm not sure if we would, if we want to figure out how to manipulate the language so that it can be an up to seven member board, or if we would all like to decide to go with five as the recommendation. Mr. Vernon Jones. I wonder if we could, I mean, based on things that have been said, I wonder if we could go for five, but write in the authority of the board to expand itself to seven or to request appointments to, to go to seven. And I would say up to seven, if you up don't up want to it to seven. go to nine. Yeah. Right, up to seven. Um, is everyone in agreement with that suggestion? It's challenging, yeah, well, it's challenging, even if we have five and one BIPOC, you know, didn't show up one of the meetings and we have two white, two, two BIPOC to, to make a vote, how would that work out? I'm okay with five, as long as it's four BIPOC and one white. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Mr. Vernon Jones. Well, what I proposed and wrote in here was that um, if we were at a five member board, that the BIPOC members would always get three votes, even if there were only two of them. Even if it was only one BIPOC member, they'd get all three votes. So it maintains voting power in the hands of a BIPOC majority, regardless of uh, a vacancy or um, in, the, uh, you know, in the board. How does that work? I don't understand. So if one of the meetings we have four member, the form quorum, that is a, a vote comes up and we have two BIPOC and two white, how would the three, three votes always for BIPOC if one person is absent that day? Yes, yeah. Mr. Vernon Jones. Yeah, I didn't write it for board absences. I wrote it for board vacancies. Vacancies. But with a vacancy, um, you know, if there was, if it's a five person board and okay. three BIPOC slots, at least three, I mean, it could be more, it could be more, but at least three, uh, and there were two white and two uh, BIPOC members, each white member would get one vote and each BIPOC member's vote would count as one and a half. Oh, so three is of that them, possible? I, I wrote it. I don't see why it can't happen. That's creative. I've never heard about that before. Hey, we need people with legal background. What do you think, Deborah, Alicia, and Brianna? Respond. Is that legal? Is that legit? <laughs> I mean, I, I think I think that's a great idea. And I mean, like you said, we can write it in there, but now whether people are going to whether they're going to vote that in, I'm not sure. I mean, you know, that's, yeah, you're going to have to sell it. And I, I, I don't know. I, I see that as not happening. <laughs> I love it, though. That is so. <laughs> I think that that can happen, but I, I would wonder what if the two BIPOC community members aren't in agreement of what happens. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, they each of them still gets one and a half votes. And then you total the votes and- So then it's like three and a half versus one and a half. Yeah. 
Isn't America one vote per person? Isn't that what we're about? <laughs> I love it though. I'm, you know, I'm laughing. I thought it's a great idea. <laughs> I mean, my concern is there's been some history of leaving vacancies in existing boards. And I think people understand that that has been manipulated sometimes in this town. And this is just a, an insistence that that not be allowed to dilute the BIPOC power on this board. Because the problem we're trying to solve, and particularly in terms of building confidence in the BIPOC community, cannot be solved in a majority if the whites have the majority of the board. And I think we just need to keep saying that clearly. And this is how this is a way to, I mean, if they, I think this will incentivize people to keep the board full and not leave BIPOC vacancies. Um, but it, it, it eliminates the danger of that manipulation. So. Yes, Ms. Pat. I would like to suggest we do the five member with four BIPOC and one white. Or uh, seven with five BIPOC. Just in case like if people disagree with one and a half vote, which I think yeah, is going to be highly controversial. It will, it will create a lot of distraction. I kind of like the idea. I think it's very creative, but knowing what MS Town is. Yeah. You know? yeah I, that, that would be one battle I wouldn't want to take on. Uh, me either. So many yeah. other battles with this that would yeah. be known. I don't yeah. know. A battle with fighting. I, I just think we need to like figure out just kind of what the majority, you know, making sure it's majority BIPOC and all yeah. this. At least that's my opinion, but obviously I'll go with the the will of the group, um, but that, that's what I would say. Thank you, Ms. Ferrer. Uh, Mr. Vernon Jones? I, you know, I don't know how it will go. I think trying to sell four BIPOC out of a five member board is gonna be a harder sell. So let's do seven. Let's do seven. Can we do seven then? No, well, that, that has all the other problems we, we talked about. What if we recommend like uh, four BIPOC, but two of them to be specifically black residents? Because BIPOC includes other identities. That's good. I'm in agreement of that. I agree. Me too. So it's at least four out of five BIPOC, at least two black. Is that, is that what we're saying? Yeah. Yes. Well, let's, let's write it that way and see what happens when we start negotiating with the police chief and town manager and everybody, but let's do it. Okay. So let's come up with our backup. If they if they would prefer to have two white, I don't have problem with that, but it has to be seven member. So let's, you know, we're not going to write it now, but when we're negotiating with the, with the police chief and the town manager, if they feel that they want more than one white person on the board, then let's push it for, you know, our alternative uh, uh suggestion would be seven board member with five BIPOC at least three uh uh black people right would it be three black people or two black people let's cross that bridge when we get to it okay yeah i don't know that if you guys say three quarters BIPOC community members that you'll get a lot of kickback from that i think that that's what they're what's anticipated out of the resident advisor the resident oversight board is that it is the majority is BIPOC and it would work in the same way that you know Paul created when he created the charge for CSWG was very adamant that it's three quarters BIPOC like I don't think that that's a, a, an issue that you'll have um 
to worry about as much. Thank you, Ms. Moiston. Okay, and so with that, I'm hoping we can then revisit. We only ha we have uh, 20 some minutes left, 26, if we can revisit the stipends. So um, I heard earlier that there was mention of a $3,000 stipend for the resident oversight board members, but with the addition of um, compensation for training and the possibility of reimbursement for transportation. Ms. Ferreira. I would just say, um, you know, 3000 plus um, compensation for training, but I don't know about transportation. Because basically it's like we're already paying the 3000. I think if we're gonna do a stipend, let's just do the stipend and reimburse for training because they're gonna to have to do a lot of training. But I don't know about transportation. Okay. And in terms of the, um, the compensation for training, how do you all, how would you all like that to be structured? Ms. Owen? Maybe we could do it hourly. Ms. Moiston? Okay, so that one I'm a little concerned that you might get some kickback and I think it's probably would be easier to get transportation if there was somewhere that the resident oversight board members were going. But my guess is that training would happen during their meetings. No? Are you talking about training happening outside of the meeting or? Well, I guess my thought, and I guess Mr. Vernon Jones would have to, to clarify, I guess my thought is that they're going to have to do a lot of training in the beginning, even before they start doing their work. So is it, so are we saying, so if we're saying that, okay, the 3000 will cover the, the time for them to do training, then I don't know. I mean, I guess we, we just have to think about whether 3000 is enough. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Mr. Vernon Jones? Yeah, I, I don't know, you know, what's enough. Uh, I do know that the NACOL, you know, the national organization doesn't specify a number of hours of training because it says conditions are very different in different towns. Um, one of, the, you know, the Cedar Rapids specifies 30 hours um, for new board members and I don't know, maybe 10 a year for, for, you know, in your second and third years of your term. Um, and I would assume some of that would be in their meetings, but some of it might be attending, you know, there are a whole lot of webinars and, and things that, that NACO offers. Uh, and some of it may be required attendance at, you know, training sessions that include people besides just the Amherst board. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Um, I guess I'm, I also am unsure about how the trainings would work because I guess I was also under the impression that they would need initial training before they would be able to participate on the resident oversight board. And so I wanted them to be able to be compensated for that training that would need to happen um, before. And then I assume that there might also be continuous training or some other things that may have to happen down the line and that those that they would be compensated for those as well I just don't I didn't consider that they might happen during meeting times um Miss Owen and then Miss Moiston just thinking out loud I'm thinking like they're probably going to have to have some sort of training to understand further the APD's like organizational and oversight structures. If we had consultants to help us with this work, we would have a comprehensive report to give them. But I feel like because we're not, we haven't yet received those consultants and we don't, like there's so many processes that they have to learn before they just jump right into it. And I feel like that's what's going to take some time before they can um, be inve investigating anything or looking at complaints. 
Yeah, and I, I think that I'm looking at it as the group that is appointed, right? Their first steps are to be trained because not only do they need to be trained, and that is that is that's when they get together. I mean, we would have to post meetings for their trainings, honestly. And so, um, and I just don't want it to be f forgotten that I feel like one of the things that was a barrier for CSWG was the lack of knowledge of how local government actually works and how it is. Um, the way that it worked then might not be relevant to the way that it, it should be working now. And so I feel like they also need to be trained on how the budget works, like a thorough like training on how the budget works and the different policies. So there's multiple, multiple different things that this group needs to be trained on. And I just assume that once the group is formed, the training starts then. And that is also part of their meeting. They don't investigate anything until after they, I'm sorry, I'm a clicker, until they, um, go through the rest of them until they've been trained right i don't know if that made sense i <laughs> thank you miss moiston um i'm unsure um i'm unsure about that and miss pat a couple of things you asked about and how should the structure of the stipend be i mean the town manager would decide whether they want to do every other week as they're doing with us, um, you know, whatever. So we're not going to micromanage how, you know, he's going to pay, you know, give people a stipend, if, you know. I don't know if, you know, he will be open to paying people the whole amount at the same time or every other week or every month, I don't know. So that's... Um, Thank you, Ms. Pat. Ms. Ferreira? Yeah, I mean, I, I just think again, and I, I don't know if we have to really decide right now because we, we only have a little bit of time and we haven't talked about standing committee, but I think that could be something that we could think about um, in terms of the stipend because since Mr. Bernard Jones still has to kind of like um, go back and, and, and do a redraft, we can think about that and then, and then come up with it. Because my thing would be more so to say, okay, this is what, how much we think it would, you know, some, you know, if you serve on this, you would deserve to get paid in terms of stipend because it includes training, includes transportation, includes the, the you know, and then we break it down in terms of how much money they should receive for the stipend and why, right? Because they, they have to do 30 hours of training because they have to do this. And this. I think that would be better than to, to, to kind of try to piecemeal it because I think that becomes more difficult for the town too in terms of them having their budget and, and so on and so forth, you know? I think that's how we should go about it. And right now, I'm not sure if 3,000 will cover everything that we need them to do during that time period. Thank you, Ms. So should we, yeah, so should we table the stipend to next week or are we good with 3K for everything? No, I say table it till next week. I, I, want more, I want more thought on it. Okay. Yeah, I'm okay with um, tabling that till next week to give everyone a chance to think about that more. I know I think I also would like more time to think about that. Um, and we only have about a little bit less than 15 minutes left. So if everyone's okay with moving into the standing committee, um, the decision as to the name of the standing committee. We have a couple of um, names proposed, Ms. Moiston. I don't know if it's possible that you can put them on the screen. I thought I was already screen sharing, sorry. <laughs> can you see it now? Yes, thank you. Um, so these are some of the proposals we've had from group members so far. Um, I don't think we're limited to these. If anybody has something else that they didn't get to suggest that they would like to suggest um, at this time, uh, we are also open to that. Um, but these are things to consider. And I don't know if every, anybody had time to think about uh, what they like would like the name of the standing committee to be. Mr. Vernon Jones. I don't I don't feel strongly about this, but I've wondered about calling it the Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, and Safety Committee. Which one? 
I, I'm I'm proposing putting all four things in the. It's not it's not one that's there. Diversity, equity, inclusion, and safety. Can somebody type it in? I'll write it down. It's, yeah, this is a PDF. I can't type that in. Oh, you can. What did you say? Diversity, equity, inclusion, and safety. Okay, so we have five five uh, choices. Does anyone have any other prefer have any preferences to um, any of the names listed here? I really like. Um, I mean, these all have them in it, but I like keeping the community safety aspect of it um, and adding some aspects of diversity and inclusion. I know there are a few that we have up here that have that sort of combination. I don't know how you all feel, but I think I'm leaning towards one of those. Ms. Owen. Um, I really like the multicultural affairs because I think it's important that this group start with the intention to go forward with our BIPOC cultural center and also the, um, the youth empowerment center. So if the multicultural is like in the title, I think it emphasizes those recommendations so they don't get lost. So I really like that one. And I also like um, the, the diversity, equity, inclusion and safety that um, Mr. Vernon Jones proposed. Thank you, Ms. Owen. Ms. Moyston? Not that I have a voting opinion, but the social justice one too, though, also makes it seem a lot more inclusive in regards to the different work that this group might do as well. Just because social justice is, combines, like at least in my mind, all of it, right? So it, it includes DEI, it includes um, homelessness, it includes whatever the case is, you know, it includes everything when you do social justice, low income, so forth and so forth. Thank you, Ms. Moyston. Ms. Pat? I kind of agree with uh, Ms. Moyston and also uh, Brianna, because I, I searched internet like randomly and some communities who are doing DEI stuff they're still using social justice. It's almost like classic, like it doesn't fade. When you mention social justice, people know exactly what you're talking about. It's very inclusive. I'm feeling that the DEI thing will, it's like a phase, it will come and go. I could be wrong. But, um, you know, the DEI and safety, it will be good to include community safety. I don't know, but. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Mr. Vernon Jones. I think Jennifer has convinced me I would go with social justice and community safety. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. I'm, yeah, I mean, in 20 years, social justice will not go away. I mean, you go online, there's so much stuff, you know, social yeah. justice, social justice, I think, yeah. Let's table this. <laughs> oh, well. let's, 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 I'm, good with the social justice. I'm good with the social justice and community safety I, too. And I, I was just toying with, you know, community safety and social justice, but I'm good with social justice, community safety. I like that. Maybe uh, turn it around. I yeah. like that. Because this is all about safety. Yeah, I like that. Community safety and social justice. Is that what you say? Yeah, yeah. community yeah. safety. I kind of like that. What do people think? No. No, I think that's good. Yeah, I was just thinking in terms of keeping, you know, like since this is kind of a spin-off of CSWG exactly. and community safety yeah. a working group to kind of yeah. put that first and then social. I like that. Mr. Vernon Jones. Can we just check whether Darius has some input on this? Yes. Um. Yeah, I've been in agreement with like, uh, with what Miss Pat was had to say about like the social justice thing, and then going 
going back to this, uh, like I just been in agreement with like mostly everything. Thank you, Mr. Cage. Um, I also just want to chime in that I, I like Miss um, Ferreira's suggestion because I I also am in agreement with Miss Pat in terms of social justice and like Miss Moisten reminded us that that is also really inclusive and includes a lot of topics that we would like to touch on, which all in turn makes a community more safer. So it is community safety, which is what we are. So I like Deborah's suggestion in switching them. Um, and I would be willing to um, go with that one. What do you think, Brianna? I'm in agreement. Okay. So do we take a vote? I think we have a decision. Okay. Thank you guys. That was quick. Awesome. Um, so we do only have 10 minutes left and the last, um, well, we have subgroup check-in. I'm hoping we might be able to table that until next week. We don't have enough time to go through that and I'm sure people are still working on things. Um, but if we could have the last 10 minutes dedicated to Crest implementation follow-up, um, I think that would be important information to share with you all uh, because Ms. Pat and I were able to meet with the implementation team this morning. Um, and so I would like to just um, open the floor at this time for us to share uh, what the meeting entailed. And if it's okay, Ms. Pat, I'll let you start off. Thank you. Could I just... Oh. Could I just say one thing on the standing committee before we move on to this? Just yeah, that I don't know if you all saw that I did send some um, kind of edits to the standing committee yeah. kind of charge. I don't know if you all saw that. So I just want to make sure. I got it. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Um, Ms. Pat, you got her edits as well. Start again. Did you receive um, Ms. Ferris? Yes, I did. Well? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Great. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Want me to go? Yes. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead, Ms. Pat. Thank you. Okay. So people know um, Brianna's schedule didn't allow her to attend the uh, press impl implementation meeting very quickly. I will say my observation, the, the meeting was very productive. I felt um, that after we voiced concern, myself, um, Alicia and myself, regarding the grant thing, um, Mary Beth was able to follow up with the group that I suggested in Springfield. And um, he has, she has been in touch with them and will send them the grant um, application for them to review. So, um, I'm just mindful of time. So if anybody else wants to chime in, I, you know, I thought it was a productive meeting. We had the uh, 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 chief of police at the meeting, Ms. Moisten, um, the ambassador, supervisor, Kat, did I say her name correctly? Yeah, yeah, so I'll shut up just because of time. Thank you, Ms. Pat, Ms. Moisten, and then Ms. Owen. Just quickly, I just wanted to give um, the members of CSWG a little bit of background on the grant because I'm not sure if everybody is aware of the grant and the process. So there is an opportunity for a grant for $400,000 that comes over a period of years um, to work with a social agent from Department of Health. So it is an agreement that you work with another social service agency, um, not for Crest necessarily or Crest employees, but for follow-up. So if someone goes, is admitted to the hospital and they get out, but they're homeless and they need additional services that Crest can't provide, that that group can, that the other, the social agency can um, provide those services and the follow-up that is needed. And so I just wanted to give a little quick background about that grant. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Boyston. Sorry, you were muted, Ms. Moisten, so I wasn't sure if you were still talking to us. No, I shut my screen off. I was trying to mute myself and I shut the screen off. Oh. 
Okay. Um, yep. And so with the last seven minutes, I just wanted to add to that. Um, we talked about the, the Harvard Kennedy Government Performance Lab, which was the funding that we are the technical assistance, which we had previously applied for, but we did not qualify for that assistance. Um, however, they did invite us to be a part of the conversation with other communities who are either starting or have already embarked on doing the same kind of work. And I think there are uh, like some 30 some communities involved in that collaboration. Um, other takeaways from the implementation meeting were, <clears throat> were that we're still working on um, partnering with LEAP. We have not yet executed a contract, but it is in negotiation and we're hoping that that will be finalized within the next week or so and that LEAP will give us a timeline as to when they expect to have the data available to us. Um, uh, and then there, the majority of the rest of the conversation was in regards to the other grant from the Department of Public Health, which Ms. Moisten just um, spoke about which required a partnership with a local social service agency and 50% of any sums awarded would also go to that social service agency. Um, and that would be a 400K award. And we're hoping to, to look and see if we can compile BIPOC social service agencies uh, to avoid that partnership being like with ServiceNet, CSO, or CHD, but that's where we are right now. Um, and the due date for that grant application is August 4th, so next week. So um, I don't know if you, are, you know about the update, uh, Alicia. Um, I did, I was able to get, um, to connect Medibeth to two organizations that are led by BIPOC professionals in Springfield. So um, she has connected with them because the one that the town has identified um, is white led organization locally and um, we objected to that. But so you may wanna catch up on your email. Thank you, Ms. Yeah. Matt. Uh, Ms. Owen. <clears throat> Question at the implementation uh, meeting, one thing that I've been thinking about, didn't Senator Comerford give um, the town $90,000 for Crest like way back in, I wanna say February or in that time period, or was that in my head? If nobody knows, I can follow up when Alicia and I meet with Mr. Bockelman, but I, I thought that 90,000 was thrown around for something. Thank you, Ms. Owen. Uh, Mr. Vernon Jones. I know that she put it in the Senate budget proposal uh, and I assume that, you know, that proposal is, has now passed and I assume it's in there, but I, do, I can't confirm that. Okay. I, I will follow up when um, Alicia and I meet with Mr. Bockelman, because I was wondering where that went. Thank you, Ms. Uh, and so, thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. So, Sorry, yes, Ms. Pat. So the last thing that we talked about was uh, we raised uh, myself, um, Alicia and myself, we raised the fact that community members, some BIPOC folks are interested in participating in the planning and implementation of CREST program. And I, um, so Ms. Marston, if you wanna elaborate on that, that is plan mm -hmm. to do something in the future. Yep. So, and in the, some of it has to be in the more immediate future. So I don't know that those meetings will be open to the public um, at when, when the implementation team meets itself, but I will say that there was, you know, I think a great thing, way to still keep, get the community voices in is to have the open forums if possible. So if we had like four of them, one at the beginning to check in to see what, the BIPOC community is looking for, uh, you know, we have an idea, but to hear it from them, right, is helpful. And then you have one kind of in the middle for a, like a touch base informational and to get more feedback from the community. And then once we're ready to launch, then that's another one. And then a follow up, an additional follow up open forum. Um, I don't, I don't know that we'll be able to have that meeting. I asked about if that could be open to the public and I don't think that's gonna happen, but we can at least get the voices and the concerns. And I feel like if the community can see their voices heard through the decisions that are being made 
to implement Crest, then that will be uh, the reassuring piece of it. That's what we're looking for at the end. Of we also talked about um, moving the meeting so that it will accommodate Brianna's schedule, work yep. schedule. Yep. And so I know we have to get off, but I'm not here next week. And so I just need to be able to chat with Alicia and Brianna quickly about when a good, what would be, what is a good time to have these meetings. Are we meeting next week for the implementation? I'll be back on Thursday, but so if Thursday is going to be the day, then that's fine. We just need to know, like, we have to change the time, obviously, because that time doesn't work for Brianna. And if Thursdays doesn't work for Brianna, that's good, too. I mean, sorry, my question was, would we be, I meant, would we be meeting weekly? Because I thought it was bi-weekly. Oh, I think that it's weekly and we went bi-weekly because we didn't, Paul had been on vacation or something and we didn't really have any update or information at that point. Okay. So I'm going to say that group would probably strive for weekly, but it could be bi-weekly depending on what's going on. And then other times it could be that there's so much going on that it has to be weekly. Okay. And I can do next Thursday morning. I just couldn't this Thursday morning. I had to be in Boston. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So we're Thursday mornings okay, typically? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So before we get off, I would like to request that we take one week off next month for a break. Maybe assign ourselves research or work to do just to catch up. There's so much reading, there's so much that um, we we'll probably need a week off. Um, I have not taken any day off from these meetings. So, and that's the way I operate. I, I get obsessed about something. I, I like to say it through. So I, I'm strongly suggesting that we take one week off, any week in August, please, so that we can re-energize. I mean, we don't have any, everybody in the meeting tonight and people are getting exhausted. I just want to spell it out. I think if we take a, a, a week, one week off, it would be nice. Thank you, Ms. Pa uh, Mr. Vernon Jones. I like that idea and I would propose we take the 19th off. <laughs> wow. I'll be at the beach and I'd rather not be, you know, Standing in a CSWG meeting yeah. at, from the beach. So that works perfect for me. Okay. That okay, that works for me also. Wow, okay. Oh my great. gosh, I can't believe that. <laughs> okay, great. But um, we will all be here, however, next Thursday at 5.30, um, correct? Yes, and the agenda is exactly the same, so that works. Yeah. Okay, perfect. And it's already been posted. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Moyston. Thank um, you. And so unless there's anything else anyone wanted to discuss as a topic not anticipated within 24 hours of the meeting, um, I would like to call this meeting to adjourn so that we can attend um, the League of Women Voters event. Do people have link to that meeting? I know. Does someone need the link? I, I think I need the I, link. I need the link. OK, I'll send it right now. Great, thank you. I won't be able to stay too long because I have actually some work work I gotta do, so. You look, you look tired. <laughs> and I still, have, I still have more work to do, so that's why yeah. I can't stay long. Tell me, tell me about it. <laughs> I just am so excited when we won't be meeting on the 19th. You see how excited I am? I'm exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I am. So we're leaving, right? Are we're we done? done, right? Oh, okay. Yes, we're okay. done. Sorry. Just meeting just meeting is adjourned. Thank, Thank you, you all for coming tonight. Bye. Bye.